Good morning. It's another early start for me this morning. I've actually been really impressed with myself this year of being able to get up early in the summer months for sunrise because a year ago, if I told myself or you told me that I was going to be getting up at stupid o'clock in the morning to photograph the sunrise in the summer, I would have told you you were mad. But my goodness, I have been enjoying it. And today I am super excited because when I looked at the weather forecast yesterday, in fact, when I looked at the weather forecast a few days ago, this morning is the perfect conditions for sunrise photography. Now, when I looked at the weather forecast, it said it was going to be a mix of sunshine and clouds. Perfect. Hopefully getting the open horizon with some clouds above for interest. The tide is set to be out perfect the chance of pools of water interesting shapes in the sand and there's barely a breeze in the air meaning if i do get those pools of water reflection shots are on the cards it is a bit um a bit clearer this morning than i would have liked but the horizon at the moment it's an hour until sunrise but the horizon at the moment is clear which gives us a great opportunity of getting some stunning light. So without further ado, I'm going to get myself ready, head down to the beach and hope and pray that we get a stunning sunrise this morning. And it is looking pretty likely. Look at that. Wow. I'm telling you, it is nippy this morning. It was meant to be nine degrees, but when I got in the car, it was five degrees. It's got a real autumnal feel in the air for the final day of August. And what a privilege to be out. Oh, let's get down to this beach and find some compositions. The vastness of this beach when the tide is out. Oh man, just look at this. Woo! Incredible. So what I'm doing quickly just now is walking along the shore's edge. Try to stay far away from these so I don't walk into any compositions. But I'm basically looking at all these different pools of water and trying to decide which one is going to give me the more interesting sort of reflections and shapes in the sand. Uh, I mean, the, the pools of water this morning are completely different in shape than the last time I came here when the tide was out, which was an incredible shoot, by the way. If you never saw it, do check it out, because I had incredible pools of water. I had fog coming in from the, the countryside to the seaside. It was beautiful. So I've got completely different compositions this morning, but that's what I love about the coast. Every time you come to the beach when it's low tide, the shapes in the sand, the pools of water, especially if you do it a week or so, you know, between shoots, the difference in shapes can be incredible. Oh, look at this. This, this uh, camera doesn't do it justice, but I think I've found two that I like. I'm going to start with the one furthest away from the sunrise so that I don't walk into other compositions. Oh, this one's cool. We've got intro. Oh, yeah, right. I'm going to stop talking and set up. Look at this.
right now I've got a bit of a conundrum going on. The best of the light is behind me, but a lot of the really interesting shapes in the sand that I'm finding are pointing more out to sea. So what I'm doing is I'm walking around and trying to just find something that's going to complement this image. You know, some interesting foreground, um, some interesting shapes that's just going to allow me to get the best of the sunrise in terms of colour. So that's what I'm doing just now. It does look like I'm going to have to put some filters on because the sky is quite bright in contrast with the foreground. But uh, yeah, it's all about running around and trying to make the most of these shapes and try and work out what's going to work best to show off the colour. And the best shape I found is back that way. But like I say, it faces the sea. So what I'm going to do is once the sun has risen and we've got that golden glow, I'm going to shoot that one before the tide comes in. And hopefully that will allow some golden glow on the land, which will allow for interest where there currently isn't any. So I can focus on the beautiful colours in the sky that we've got for these first few images. Stunning. I've got with me this morning is a really dark hard edge one which hard edge works well for this because we've got a, a straight horizon but it's just a bit too dark unfortunately making the image look quite unnatural uh, sky far too dark so I think what I'm gonna have to do is underexpose my image slightly exposed for the sky because a tip here when you're exposing your image you want to expose the majority of the time for the highlights because one thing you cannot rectify in post-processing is if you overexpose your highlights, the chances of getting them back in post-processing is very minimal. But if you expose for the highlights, get them right, it's a lot easier to bring out the shadows. Ideally, you want to get the exposure 100% correct in camera using filters or bracketed exposure. But as I'm somebody who doesn't like to do too much editing at this moment in my photography journey, I like to get it right in the camera. So I'm going to underexpose slightly and see how I get on. quickly this composition that I'm currently shooting. Basically I was standing with my tripod up at eye level which isn't something I do very often I have to be honest but sometimes when it comes to reflections you have to play around with eye level tripod and down at the ground because the reflection can look completely different and depending on where the clouds are and the colours are in the sky well depends what angle you want your tripod to be in or what level you want it to be in to get the best of those reflections. And while I was standing up, I found that the reflections in terms of colours looked a bit better, but the foreground interest and the actual pools of water and how beautiful they are in real life, it wasn't doing it justice. So I've lowered my tripod now down to almost as low as it will go, and it's allowing me to really include these beautiful shapes in the sand, which act as natural leading lines into the image. And as the sun has, you know, began to rise and we're getting different colours in the sky and the clouds have moved a little bit, it's allowing for the, the colours and the reflections to be at slightly different parts of the landscape. That's a little tip for you there, especially when you're doing reflection shots, 
don't be afraid to lower and heighten your tripod and before you do that go sort of up and down with your camera or even just your body and see where the reflections are and what sort of level is going to work best before you set everything up and take your photograph. Experimenting is the key to getting good images. And here I am, taking some more shots for Instagram. Remember, if you don't follow me already, head over and follow at Kim Grant Photography to see where I am on the day and follow me along on my adventures. I said in my last video that often the unplanned shoots are the ones that reap the best results and I still stand by that but it's funny in many ways because I sort of knew two days ago looking at weather forecast which is a strange thing to say because especially here in Scotland the weather forecast changes so quickly you can look at the forecast for two days time and then the night before you look at it again and it's completely different but I just had this feeling when I looked at the weather on Saturday that today, which is Monday morning, was going to be an epic day for photography. I don't know why, but I just knew it. And uh, I've really been blown away with the conditions this morning. I have to say though, one thing I do wish I had right now is a zoom lens, because I had to hand back the one I was loaning that I was using for wildlife photography. But there's some beautiful, um, you know, the waves and the hues and the colours and the horizon right now are just stunning. And uh, we've got this big line of, of gulls on the shoreline and they keep flying up and causing these beautiful silhouettes on the horizon. And then you've got some boats and everything in the distance twinkling with their lights on. And it would have made a really nice photograph, but I don't have a zoom lens. The largest focal length I currently own is 70 millimetres. But I did order a new lens the other day that goes up to 200 millimetres for landscape photography. I've no idea when it's going to arrive, but when it does, I can't wait to, to try it out and, and enjoy photography. You know, zooming in and doing that kind of landscapes again, it's been a while since I've done that. But um, you just got to, one thing I love to utilise and one thing I love to, to advocate is it's not about your gear, it's not about what you've got. Of course, having different focal lengths is going to allow you to get different photographs, but actually, Coming out with one lens, like I've done this morning, it really challenges you to look for um, different compositions, different opportunities, and while you may miss one or two things because of your uh, lack of um, choice, it does really, I think, make you a better photographer. If you can utilise, come out with one lens, utilise it to the best of your abilities, and try and get the best photographs you can, it's a great way to challenge yourself. And uh, I mean, what a beautiful morning to do that. We're at that point now where the sun hasn't quite risen, so we've not got the intense orange glow, but all the beautiful, or the majority of the beautiful colours in the clouds have gone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move to that interesting shape in the sand that I was talking about earlier, wait for the orange sunrise light to cast over the land and hopefully get some more images. if we're going to get that nice orange glow that I was anticipating. Now there's quite a big bank of cloud on the horizon which although it's still illuminated orange in that direction it's not allowing of the light to come out and cast over the land. I'm going to remain positive though because things can change in the blink of an eye although on a calm still morning like this morning it's a lot more um, 
things are a lot more slower than if it was windy and wild but uh, I'm gonna keep hopeful because this composition that I've found here I absolutely love it it reminds me of the last time I was here that foggy morning but in some ways it's even more interesting because we've got this feathered effect in the sand this beautiful shapes that lead out naturally into the sea itself and even since I've been here the tide has retreated further and less water is now in this pool which is allowing these interesting lines to be more prominent and this is also an example of how changing the height of your tripods can transform your images so the example I gave you earlier lowering my tripod was better because it's allowing me to include more of that interest in the foreground and just create a slightly more visually appealing image this example, it's better for me to raise my tripod because it's allowing me to see all the pools of water which lead into the sea and it just looks far more visually appealing. So experiment with your tripod heights, experiment if you don't use a tripod, experiment with your body heights and you'll find the more you do that the more you sort of learn what works and what doesn't and you will transform your images. You know a big mistake is to come to a location, plonk your tripod down and uh, don't think any further than that. It's one thing I see a lot on workshops. A lot of clients will get their tripod out, put it up to eye level and just stay at that level. It's really good to, to actually visualise your image first and experiment with different heights and positions to try and get that interesting photograph. has now risen and we've got some orange glow on the landscape it's not as intense as I'd hoped it would be which is a shame but I'm not letting it get me down because this morning has been incredible in so many ways and actually I'm trying to utilize the little bit of light that we do have to create an interesting image and what I've done is I've moved my tripod slightly further to the right and there is some nice light just now casting on the town of Fraser around the distance so what I'm trying to do is utilize that showcase the town on this on the horizon which is adding interest and I've also put a eight stop ND filter on my camera which is allowing obviously me, me to do a long exposure which in this conditions I wasn't wanting to do because the the pool of water is static we don't need it to be blurred or smoothed but what I have learned over the years is sometimes using an ND filter and doing a long exposure can bring out a little bit more colour in your images than if you're using a fast shutter speed. So I'm just trying it. Again, I think this, this video was really all about the idea of trying things. Trying different heights of your tripod, trying different filters, trying moving around. The best way to learn, and even when you've been doing photography for years, like I have, I've been doing photography for 11 years and every day I'm still learning, every day I'm still trialling different things. There's no such thing as a rule in photography, there's no such thing as the way you must do things. And actually you have to adapt to the conditions. And while certain hints and tips work better in certain conditions, just trying it out and seeing what will work for you is the best way to do it. So this morning's all been about trial, it's all been about error, it's all been about trying new things and seeing what works. I have to say, on the whole, I wasn't all that happy with these last few images. I mean, the light was nice. I don't think things quite fell into place as I'd hoped they would and in hindsight I wish I'd zoomed in and created a more fine art style photograph around the beautiful feathered shapes in the sands but I'll just have to make do with this cropped version of one of the images you've just seen. I 
to say overall I'm pretty happy with the images I've created this morning and um, I hope I've managed to utilise these conditions to the best of my ability. Now, despite it only being 5 degrees, although I do imagine the temperature has gone up a few degrees since sunrise, I'm heading back to my car now to put my tripod and camera away and get my swimming stuff. Because I'm going in that sea, despite it being Baltic temperatures. One thing I've been wanting to do for ages is find a different way to connect with the coast and a way that's really good for our mind, body and soul and wild swimming is one of those ways. And although so far I've only done swimming during the day in the warm weather, I'm wanting to start acclimatising myself to the sea. So this morning is the beginning of that journey. Um, you may see it on my YouTube channel in the future because if I do end up doing it quite a lot it might be quite an interesting feature. But um, until then, or until next time, I want to say a huge thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something from this video because I didn't come out this morning to do a teaching style video but that's how it's turned out to be. Spontaneous is the best way forward as my last video will have showed you. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching and I look forward to hopefully seeing you all again next time.